All right, in the last video, I showed you my hydroponic tower and uh, how it worked. In the meantime, I have stripped it apart. There's some of the last harvest, um, the clay beads out of all the holders, um, my pump line and everything. So I thought I would just assemble this um, just to show you how it goes together and then you'll have a better understanding of probably how it works if you see it go together. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is put the base together. Now, when I 3D printed the base, it was all these different pieces together and then you have to use bolts to put them together. And then there's a file for the light stand and the light stand works pretty well. So that goes together like that. It had these water filling spots where you can take water samples if you want or, or pour water in the system. So I put two of them on and then I notched this by just cutting it. I could have taken the file and edited it so the cord could go through there, but the cord for the pump goes through there. Anyways, we'll just quickly put this together and show you how, show you the individual pieces and how it goes together, okay? Um, the next piece that goes on is this bottom extension and it comes equipped with the ability to screw a screen to the bottom and that'll keep um, a lot of the roots out of the bottom. Everything's just going to push and turn together. So this thing's going to go together pretty quick. Okay. And then these are the planters themselves. All right. They have holes on the side of them to attach um, the light bars to. And you could also put little like tags in between here telling what the plants are. I've cleaned this pretty decently. I haven't used any chemicals to clean it. I've just ran it with a brush so you can see a little bit of green algae in there, but nothing that I'm really too concerned about at this moment. I might uh, spray them with bleach at another time. If you play with these, um, they will tighten on so all the pods alternate and they don't get in each other's way as much. You can also print extension pieces in between them if you want more distance between your plants. And that can definitely be a problem, possibly. So if you wanna put extensions in, you can. This particular tower is just five pods high. So it can plant um, 20 plants in this right now and I'm going to make it at least three taller. Okay, so I might make it four taller, but at least three taller would give me a 35 capacity in this tower. Okay, all of these pieces have had a hole in the middle and that's to fit the water line through from the bottom to the top. And the water line attaches to this little uh, pump that you can buy off of Amazon and it sits in the bottom on these little suction cups, pumps water up to the very, very top, and then the water trickles down on all the root cups. So uh, the pump fared well. It was lots big enough. So I got one that was 1500 liters per hour and it seemed to work pretty good. Doesn't draw much electricity. And this tower here I had running 24 hours, seven days a week it worked well. I was very happy with it. I'm going to fill it up and do it all over again. Okay, um, did I lose something? Like my head? Where is... Hmm. Oh, there it is. Um, I left this bolted on, but these are arms that hold the top of the lights on. And here's where the water line comes in to the bottom of this extension piece. And it's gonna be like a fountain. It's just going to have water trickle through all these holes and down on the roots of the plants. The inside of this is all going to be roots. And here's an example of what the roots look like. The ones from the top had actually had long enough roots that they reached all the way to the bottom and into the pail. They would have been longer, but I had cut them back a few times just to keep the pump from failing. And then um, 
a cap on top just so the water doesn't pump all over the place. This tower, this design worked very well. It did not leak on the floor. It was very dry. And the last thing to do is just to put in all the um, plant holders. So this is what you're actually going to put your plants in. You're going to use maybe something like rock wool with your seedling in there and then um, take up the rest of the space with these clay beads. The clay beads will keep the sunlight out and will keep the LJ down to a, down to a minimum. But that's pretty much how this goes together. These go in very easily. I printed some white and some red ones, just used some up some PETG filament that I had <clears throat> kicking around. And yeah, it's pretty simple. It's a lot of printing. If you do have a small 3D printer, you'll, you'll keep it pretty busy for um, upwards to a month to get one of these towers done probably. Um, not solid month, but just on and off printing to get a tall tower done. And what if by the time you wait for your lights and all that stuff, it'll be ready to rock and roll. So these uh, lights are just a standard light, just about all the grow lights are this. These ones are four footers. Um, I don't know if I've been building things that you can't see. Yep. Definitely. I need to move this so it lines up with the, the light bars below. And then I'll just show you how the lights go on and that'll be pretty much complete. You can make the tower as, as tall as you want. That's not really a concern. But the strength and everything will probably be tested if it uh, if it's really really long. So the lights just slide into the lower brackets, and then they're held on, just clipped on by those upper arms, and they held it. I didn't have any issue with it coming apart or anything like that. And I have three lights on this one. Some people have done six. Um, I just put three and then I had one light above it. I, cause I bought a four pack of these lights. So I decided to use all four of them. There's that clay beads that I'm using. It's a close up of that water pump that worked well for me. I got a cheap one off of Amazon. I didn't want to spend much money on all of this. It came with the line. I'm gonna have to change out this line and that's probably good because it gets some green slime algae accumulation on the inside of it anyways. But if I'm gonna make the tower taller, that means that I'm gonna to need to have a little bit more water line. So I'll try to get let the tower be almost as tall as the lights. So that would be, well, let's face it, they're about halfway now. So another four towers would be good, but I might experiment by putting some spacers in between them to give more room between the plants and possibly get even more, uh, more growth. The lettuce was, um, that we grew on this was good. It tasted good. We had it in salads and sandwiches and stuff all the time around here. So no regrets. It was a pretty good, uh, was a pretty good product and, um, yeah, you can download all of this stuff off of Thingiverse. And the only thing I did was I edited this lid a little bit to fit this container because I wanted to use a proper planter rather than a five gallon pail. But if all you wanted to use was a five gallon pail that you get from Home Depot or Canadian Tire or something like that, then um, the file that he provided will work just fine. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video showing you how to assemble your own 3D printed hydroponic tower.